Good morning, Cornerstone family and friends. Great to have you this morning. We just uh, did a real quick ch uh, change around here. It got really noisy outside. It's all set up there. My neighbor started uh, cutting his lawn and you would be hearing the roar of the machine underneath us shortly. So I've just changed up my location. Sorry about being a little bit too late, but hey, great to have you today. Uh, today, I wanna continue on talking on our series of Building You and looking specifically at friendship and encouragement. You know, one of the journeys of life is not being by yourself in the journey. It's like time, taking the time out to find friends, associates, people that will enjoy life together with you. And that's what makes life fun. Now, our closest friends sometimes are our family members, the ones that we hang out with most and uh, spend time with. They're great people that influence our lives and, and we enjoy them. But that friendship factor is something that we all really appreciate and we grow and nurture and develop through the course of our lifetime. So this morning, I wanna take a few minutes to just examine what friendship and encouragement really means to all of us and trust that uh, you'll be encouraged by it today as well. You know, when it comes to life, um, a lot of times we look at life's experiences and they are sometimes difficult and challenging. And it's great to have those that know us, appreciate us, value us, that come alongside of us and help us in that journey. So friendship is often been defined as a close association between two people marked by feelings of care, respect, admiration, and concern, or even love. That's typically what a real friend is. And the common traits of friendship really are people that have commitment to friendship. They want to be involved in this friendship. Uh, they're concerned about each other's well-being. There's often regular contact. Even when you've moved away, sometimes you still have great contact. And even you don't see one another maybe necessarily every day in that kind of a setting, you do connect. And when you do connect, it's a great time to be able to enjoy one another's friendship and all the shenanigans that you often do with one another. When you're involved with a friend, there's often mutual trust, there's concern, there's compassion, there's shared interests. You're involved in each other's lives and therefore you kind of know, their, you know what their background is and the experiences that they've had. You know their fears, their interests, you know the respect and admiration that comes from the, the time you've spent with one another. And I, I saw that anthropologist Robin Dunbar even suggested that most people have about 150 friends, 50 really good friends, 15 close friends, and five intimate friends. So we're involved with people, whether it's at work, whether it's play, we're involved with people all around us. And friendship is one of those things that we really want to value. In the ancient world, one of the military strategies was to be able to find somebody that you would gel with, connect with, and partner with, and you had somebody who would really watch your back and you counted on them whatever happened. In fact, when it came to hand-to-hand -hand battle and strategy, often two people would put their backs one to another so that a person could not sneak up behind them and potentially stab them. You know, when it comes to friendships, that's what we kind of do, even though it's not in a military setting, we've got each other's back. We're watching out for one another. We're looking at them, we're, we're caring for them, we're encouraging them, we're going through life's journey together. A friend protects your reputation. They overlook your faults, and let's be honest, we all have our faults, and they focus on your good traits. That's the value of a friend. <laughs> they see the good things in you. A friend is one who understands and often relates to similar experiences in life. They walk through that journey with you, whether it's good or difficult, and sometimes even in the most difficult hours, our friends come alongside and they're with us through those things. We've often seen this story, a Toy Story, that beautiful animation there, uh, wonderful CGI graphics of uh, all these toys that befriend one another and take care of one another. They have that theme song, You've Got a Friend in Me. Someone said, we'll be friends until we're old and senile, and then we'll be new friends. <laughs> you know, true friendship is when you walk into a friend's house and your Wi-Fi connects automatically. That's what friendship is all about, isn't it? We connect with people, we're with them, we're welcomed in their home, we experience life, laughter, and joy with them. Jordan Van Shake, in December 19th, 2018, in his article, The Value of True Friendship from Medium.com said, there's five questions that you need to think about when it comes to friendship. He said, what is real friendship to me? Second thing he said, which things should I value most in these relationships? Thirdly, 
which qualities am I looking for in others? Four, how can I become the best friend I can be? And lastly, he said, am I fulfilling my role as a great friend? You know, the journey of friendship is one that it's not instantaneous overnight success. It's a journey of discovering what the person is like that we're befriending, connecting with, and uh, getting to know their nuances and their ways of life and how things happen so that we can encourage one another, grow together, and develop good, healthy friendships. When you want to have a good friendship, you want to really, deci really discover what it is to have a happy, positive impact of a relationship with one another. You want to be able to reduce any kind of stresses and depression. I believe I read an article about Jimmy Morris, that great rock, rock legend from many, many years ago. He said, one of the beautiful things about being a friend with somebody is that you can just relax and be yourself. And so having a friend is one that you just want to be able to spend time with and be able to be yourself entirely. A real good friendship enhances your self-worth and often your purpose in life. And it also gives you that truth and honest gateway to be able to discuss and talk about things that you're experiencing and going through in life. The Bible talks a lot about friendship. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9-12, to it says, It's better to have a partner than to go it alone. Share the work. Share the wealth. And if one falls down, the other helps. But if there is no one to help, it's tough. Two in a bed warm each other, and alone you shiver all night. By yourself, you're unprotected. With a friend, you can face the worst. Can you round up a third? In fact, a three-stranded rope isn't easily snapped. So that, that friendship factor of having many people that are part of your life is, is a strength that comes to you. Proverbs 18.24 says, Friends come and go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. You see, the focus of our friendship is our concern for others and their good. And it's not really focused upon us. Jesus in John 15, 13 to 15 said, I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another that I, in the way that I've loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. That's the heart of Jesus. He wants friendship with us. We're not just slaves and servants in that attitude of I'm the king and you're just the lowly. But Jesus wants us to know that we are his friends. I love the story in Luke chapter 5 verses 17 to 26. It talks about a meeting where Jesus was talking with people and healing people. And some friends brought a paraplegic friend. And this man, they, they tried to get him through the crowds. They couldn't do that. So they climbed up on top of the roof and they removed the thatch. And they lowered the man right in front of Jesus. And there, this bold action actually resulted in this man's healing and to the praise of God. You know, there's a lot of times when it comes to friends that you see people that will overcome any obstacle in order to help their friends through. Dale Carnegie is a great writer who's written the book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence uh, People. And he made this quote, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. You know, when you take the time to hear people, listen to people, develop friendships, it's amazing what kind of relationships you can grow when people count and value much in your life. C.S. Lewis wrote, friendship is unnecessary, like philosophy, like art. That's his take on it. But he wrote, it has not, it has not survival value. Rather, it is one of those things which give value to survival. I thought that was great insight, you know, because friendship is what helps you to get through some of the things we do get through in life. Jess C. Scott said, Friends are the family you choose. And Bernard Meltzer said, A true friend is someone who thinks that you're a good egg, even though he knows you're slightly cracked. <laughs> I came across this story about uh, Walter and Ethel. And they were a, a married couple, and they'd been together for many, many years. And they went to the state fair every year. The state fair every year, not state fair. State fair every year. And during this one year that they went, there was a helicopter ride and the opportunity to take a helicopter ride for $50 a person. So Walter and Ethel were talking away and he was saying, you know, sweetheart, I'm 87, I'll never have this chance, you know, I, I'd really like to do it. And so the, the uh, pilot overheard their conversation. He said, tell you what, folks, I'll give you a great deal. I'll charge you $50 for the both of you. But the condition is that 
you can't say a word, you can't scream out, you can't yell, you can't do anything like that. And I'm just going to take you for a great ride. So the two of them looked at each other and Walter and Ethel, they decided they would agree to that. So up they went. The pilot takes him up and he takes him for a ride. He does every aerobatic trick he can think of. He gets going and, and finally at the end of it, he, he says, wow, you guys have just done fantastic. And, and then Walter says, you know, there was a moment though, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it. You know, that, that, that moment that Ethel fell out, I thought for sure I was going to scream. <laughs> you know, a friendship, you laugh at those kind of jokes and those stories, but you know, in real friendship, you do everything in your part to save and help and make sure that a person was uh, through the, the storm of life together, right? Friendship is one of those things that you, uh, you want to hang through and toughen out even in those hard, difficult moments. So when we go through friendships, one of the things that's a benefit to us is also realizing that friendships bring encouragement to us. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about friendship and encouragement. We're going to just shift a little bit now. And encouragement, um, Dr. Jane Nelson wrote this comment about encourage, encouragement. What does it mean and how is it done? She, th she said that there is differences between praise and encouragement. In praise, it addresses the doer. Oh, you did a great job. Um, you're fantastic. Look at your accomplishment in that sense. But the encourager looks at the job that was done. Uh, when it comes to recognizing what has been accomplished, praise often says, oh, you did it right. Whereas encouragement sometimes will come alongside a person and said, you gave it your best. And what can you learn from this? They check out the accomplishment. That's what the focus is. When it comes to attitude, praise often can be patronizing and manipulative. It says, oh, you did such a great job doing this specific thing. Whereas encouragement brings respect and appreciates what a person is accomplishing and doing. A lot of times there's an I message when it comes to praise. I really like what you did. Whereas encouragement, it tends to look at the cooperative efforts of a person. When there's examples of um, praise, you know, a person often is, will focus on, I'm really proud of you for what you did. And encouragement tends to reflect on the accomplishment of a person's hard work. Praise often will produce a sense of approval. In order to get my approval and my praise, you must accomplish a certain standard. And what that often does is it kind of, um, sets you up for an evaluation based on others' uh, approvals. Um, you become almost dependent on what they say is success and what approval rating is. Encouragement often will identify personal direction and it will take a time to evaluate self-evaluation as well as the self-confidence that comes through that. So encouragement is not just praise. It's not a focus on praise. It's really looking at the steps of where a person is developing and growing. As a teacher, one of the things we look at is when a, when a student begins to uh, understand the concepts of what they're trying to do and can put it all together and formulate their understanding of it and express that, we see their self-confidence, we see their ability to do that self-evaluation, and it's not based on the approval of a teacher to say, oh, Johnny, you did a great job, based on you know you as a person, now we're looking at more like, how is your process of thinking through and, and gaining an understanding? You want to encourage a student in their journey of their core developments. When it comes to encouragement, there's a lot of great encouragement words out there. Zig Ziglar is a, a well-known uh, author, has given out some great uh, direction to people over his lifetime and, and continues to do so since he has passed on. Uh, when you encourage others, you are in the process and encouragement uh, because you're making a commitment and a difference in that person's life. Encouragement really does make a difference. He went on to say, people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. <laughs> That's why we recommend it daily. You know, we all need encouragement in the journey of our life. We're not able to keep the high plateau of the mountain peak all the time in our life. We need to grow. And sometimes it's great to have someone come alongside and give us encouragement. Robert Schuller said, tough times never last, but tough people do. If you spend 80% of your time focusing on opportunities of tomorrow, rather than the problems of yesterday, you'll be encouraged, is what Brian Tracy recommends. In 1 Corinthians 2.9, it says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And in Acts chapter 4 to 11, we have a beautiful story of the man Barnabas. And Barnabas was a man that came alongside when Saul, 
whose name later was changed to Paul in the Bible, is one of our key uh, writers throughout the New Testament. Uh, Saul had been a, a, a man going out with every effort he had to try to quell the movement of the, the Christian faith at the beginning. And so he had an experience with God. And in that experience, Saul changed his heart and became a servant of God. And this was really quite a concern for a lot of the Christians because they knew what Saul was like. He was putting people into jail. He was ruthless. He had letters from the high priest. He was going out beyond Jerusalem and, and really trying to do everything he could to thwart this Christian movement. And so when he had his own personal experience with the living God, he changed. And he began to preach about Jesus. And he began to share about God's love. And he was converted and, and began to tell others the way of living for God. And Barnabas was a man that came alongside and he began to check out everything that was said about the stories of Saul, later Paul, to see if these things were true. He went to Antioch. He confirmed that the work of Christ was happening to those who had come to faith. He also came alongside of Paul and worked with him for a while in Antioch. And he trained people how to live out their faith. He was a man that was an encourager. He came alongside of, he, support, he supported what Paul was doing because he saw that there had been a definite change that had happened in this man's life. Sue Patton Theo says there are nine tips to live an abundant life when it comes to that place of encouragement. One, make the most of every opportunity. Don't let it pass half used and can it. You don't want to miss out those opportunities. Secondly, build friendships along the way. It brings joy, love, the sense of being loved, it makes you recognize that people matter. It helps you invest in friendships and teaches you the value of respect. Thirdly, build on what you've built. Apply for better jobs. Connect with people. Network with people. Fourthly, enjoy your life. Sing. Take the time to go for a hike and a walk. Learn something new. Play. Fifthly, have an abundance mentality. There is enough for everyone. Sixthly, smile. Sends a positive message to self and to others around you. Seven, start your day right. Rise early. Take time for um, meditating and praying. Eight, be grateful for what you have. Live in peace. Enjoy your loved ones. Enjoy your health, your finances, and conveniences. And ninthly, prepare for opportunities. Know your strengths, develop your skills, and be observant. You know, if you want to take some time to help encourage somebody, sometimes it's something very simple, such as writing an encouraging note or letter. I know that we use technology today, so a quick text, an email saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. I hope that you're doing well. Be a cheerleader. Try to take the time to affirm others. You know, there's, in our culture, we have a lot of sarcasm, right? And it's really easy to make little digs and little points at somebody. But taking the time to actually be a cheerleader and affirming somebody can go a long ways. Be available. Be willing to listen. A lot of times people don't have time. They just, they run around like they're, they've got their heads cut off like chickens and they just don't have time. But you know, if you take the time to be available and listen, it's amazing what friendship will grow. Invest in someone. You know, friendship isn't just to use people. It's really investing. You, you not only give of your life into somebody, in that investment, you're also regaining their investment into you. It's a great, great way of growing and enjoying life. Share your life experience and offer support. And most importantly, be a grace giver. You know, sometimes it's nice to have that person that comes along, affirms you, showers you with some words of, of grace. I have never met a person that knows how to do everything in life. And there's lots of times we can kind of, you know, go, well, why weren't you doing that? And why didn't you take care of that? And why didn't you do this? And grace is one of those things we need to really pour out in people's lives, right? We need to let people grow, develop, and recognize that sometimes they don't have the same strengths that we do. It's nice when we have people that come along and say, you know what, I know that you struggle here. This is not your forte, this is not your strength, but it is mine. I'd love to help out in some capacity. You know, that's really what the church is all about. It's body ministry. It's recognizing not everyone is an eye, not everyone is a mouth, not everyone is a hand. We all have our parts. And we can't put down one another and kind of say, well, because you don't have this gift or this skill, you're not as valuable. The truth is the whole body works together for the benefit of bringing praise to God. 
And so recognizing our strengths and our abilities is one of those things that friendship allows us to be honest about and to recognize where can we come alongside and help one another. You know, Kerry Newoff uh, said there are ways to overcome personal discouragement. He said, remember your past victories. In the time of Israel, in its ancient days, they set up markers throughout the land. And those markers were reminders of what God had done for them and helped them through difficult times. When you have markers in your life, those special events that you can recall and remember, they sometimes bring encouragement back into your life to go, hey, this is a reminder to me that when it was tough and difficult, God stepped into the picture and helped me. Or this is when friends came in and stepped in to help me and encourage me in that journey. Remember those past, past uh, moments and take time to celebrate. You know, sometimes we forget about that celebration factor. There's good times to remember. There's things that uh, have changed us and altered the course of our lives that have brought great victories and great, great successes. Sometimes grab a lunch with an encourager. When I pastored in Victoria many years ago, there's a lady in our church, her name was Ivy, and Ivy had a, a travel service. And uh, I pop in to see Ivy, and she had been a lady at one point in her life, had been in a wheelchair from an accident, didn't look very promising, and, and God healed her. It was an amazing thing. But every time I went and saw Ivy, she just bubbled. She just loved Jesus, and she could hardly wait to tell people about Jesus. But when, when I went in there, lots of times she would just encourage me. She would just say, hey, you know, I've been thinking about you today. I've been praying for you. Uh, anything you want me to pray about specifically? Those kind of people just, they just melt your heart. They're just people that come alongside in your life. And you go, yeah, I sure appreciate and value you. you. You just bring such encouragement to me. And you know, it becomes something that you want to reciprocate back. You grow in that grace, that love, and you enjoy that friendship and you become an encourager as well. You need to limit discouragers in your life. You know, sometimes people don't realize that they've got a great cloud over their head and it's okay to just say, hey, what's up? Why are you down so bad? What can we do to help you in that journey? But sometimes you have to limit that. You can't just bombard your life with discouragers all the time because you feel like you're not getting anywhere yourself sometimes. Sometimes it's good to work on something new, challenging, something just fresh, get good sleep, watch a comedy, and seek help if it persists. When we encourage one another and help one another through the journey of life, we discover that God is for us and he's not against us. I just want to encourage you today that God loves you. And God is an encourager. He is. He's the glory and the lifter of our heads. You know, I've mentioned this before, but when you have a little cry, a child that's crying and their, their head is down, and you come up and you just lift their little heads and you speak into their life, their, their, their face begins to change because you're taking interest in them and you're trying to fe uh, feel their feel and hear their he uh, hurts and, and be able to work in them. And you bring encouragement to them. Well, the Bible says that God is the glory and the lifter of our head. Well, look up to God. Look at his supports for your life. In Hebrews chapter 10, 24 to 25 says, so let's do it, full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. And just in light of that, uh, yesterday I sent out a survey as we begin the process of looking at reopening. If you've received an email or a text, we just want to invite you to please respond to the nine questions as we consider the process of reopening our church assembly again and uh, having time to be able to come back and fellowship. I know that there are several churches that are opening up. Some are still closed, just as there are some restaurants that have opened and some are still closed with this COVID concerns. We want to be able to do it in a wise manner and uh, based on the survey response, we'll be able to collect that data and be able to see what we can do to hopefully get things rolling as soon as possible. In Galatians chapter six, verses two to three, it says, live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens so that so, and so complete Christ's law. If you think you're too good for that, you're badly deceived. The journey of being a friend and an encourager is one that causes us to really keep into perspective what we need to do in that way of helping, being that friend, being that encourager. 
if you want to be a, an influence on people's lives, Dale Carnegie, he also writes down a, a challenge to us is the only way to get the best of an argument in a friend uh, situation is to try to avoid initiating arguments. Taking the time to hear out one another, care about one another, love one another, is a good antidote for that. I recognize that honestly sometimes friends do have kerfuffles and have a little bit of a fallout, but making the time to work towards not stirring up arguments is such an important thing. Show respect for the other person's opinions. Never say, you're wrong. If you're wrong personally, admit it quickly and emphatically. Be honest with your friend. Always bring up your conversations in a friendly manner. Love them, care for them, and let the other person do a great deal of talking in your conversations instead of just being, it's all about me. Being a true friend is being like the example of Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus was a friend of sinners. He didn't care what a person did in life in the sense of whether they were valuable enough to have a friendship. He loved people first. And you know, out of love, many people changed. What influence do we have when it comes to friendship and encouragement? Are our friends changed from the relationship we have with them? Are they encouraged? Are they growing? And the friends that we ourselves have, are they developing and building in our lives as well? When it comes to good, healthy friendships, the heart of God is that he loves us and he wants to be our friends. I wanna leave you with that today as we close. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you love us. And I love your scripture that says we're no longer just servants, we're, we're friends. And I ask that you'd help us to discover you more in our own personal friendship with you, that it could also shine into the friendships we have with others. Help us to bring encouragement into somebody's life this week. Help us to be aware of the fact that there are people around us, some friends of, uh, that are around us that maybe need words of encouragement thoughts that would lift their spirit and affirm them. Help us, Lord Jesus, that we may be effective in developing good, healthy friendships and bringing encouragement into other people's lives. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. God bless you, folks. Again, a reminder, if you can do that survey for us and send it back in, that would be really appreciated. We'll be getting back to you as soon as possible. And I thank you for your patience during this time where we've been online and uh, we probably will continue to do this as we reach out to many, many people. And I trust that you'll have a fantastic week. God bless you. Have a great day.